Right, by the way, I got a haircut yesterday, so that's why my hair is really, really short. It actually feels so good, like, oh, just washing it in the shower feels amazing. It's like, it's so good having short hair, especially in the summer, because I don't have like this long, sweaty hair in my face all the time. So I got a haircut, feels good. I reckon it looks a lot better than my long hair. Um, so I, first of all, I really, really apologize for my video yesterday. Uh, I smashed my shin like super early into the ride, and then after that happened, I just was not in the mood to make a video. And as a result of me smashing my shin uh, yesterday, I cannot ride today. There'll be a scooter riding video tomorrow, although today uh, I just want to really, really rest it up. And um, yeah, just uh, get ready for tomorrow's ride. I don't know what I'm doing yet, but I just want to rest it up because uh, it's very, very swollen, like right here on my shin. And I thought if I just rest it up today, I'll be able to ride tomorrow even better as opposed to if I rode today and rode tomorrow. So today is going to be a sitting down and speaking to the camera video um, uh, regarding the topic that uh, you guys constantly bring up in the comment section on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my YouTube, not really Facebook, but YouTube and Instagram, you guys seem to bring up this topic quite a lot. And it's about me, uh, used to, you know, it's about me, how I used to be a skateboarder and now I'm a scooter rider. So obviously there's a lot of controversy between like skateboarders and scooter riders. And um, today I'm gonna be explaining to you guys exactly how and why uh, I went from a sponsored skateboarder getting hooked up winning competitions all over the state to a sponsored and professional scooter rider. Pretty sure you guys will find this video interesting, so despite me not actually riding and kind of sitting down and speaking, I think you guys will find this video, yeah, kind of interesting and quite enjoyable actually. I'm going to pretty much explain everything from way back at the start when I was four years old. So I turned four and I remember um, I really, really, really wanted a skateboard and I didn't get one for my birthday and I was like begging my mum and my dad just for a skateboard and my mum said when I'm five I can get a skateboard and uh, then my dad actually bought me a skateboard when I was like four and a half and I was like so stoked dude, I was like way too hyped and I remember um, as soon as I got the board all I wanted to do was just skate, I had no idea about skateboarding, like I didn't know that skateboarding was like made for doing tricks, I thought it was just kind of like rolling along and it was kind of something that like cool people did, you know what I mean? So I was that like Little kid who knew nothing about skateboarding, but I just knew that it was fun and I enjoyed doing it So I used to just like we used to live in like a really 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 smooth street So I just used to cruise up and down the street like on my stomach like I couldn't stand up on the board yet So I'd ride just on my stomach and on my knees and I just kind of push around and shuffle around on the board Muck around and there was this uh, uh there was this park at the end of my street like not a skate park just like a playground With this like really really long windy concrete hill and I remember I used to like lie down on my stomach And I used to bomb that hill and then one day I put my elbow down, like when I was going down on my stomach and like cut out my whole elbow. Good times. Um, so yeah, started skating when I was four. And then uh, around the age of five, I kind of like forgot about it. I just like completely lost interest and I didn't skate for like a year. I mean, not that I was like skating properly when I was four, but you know, I was kind of just getting into it, I guess. Then when I was like six, I uh, found my skateboard in my garage again. And boom, like all I wanted to do was skate every day. And I just learned how to ollie. I used to, like, I found Rodney Mullen on YouTube. I remember I was with my dad uh, on the computer one day. And this is when I first found out about YouTube. I was probably like six years old or something, or six, yeah, like six or seven. Um, and we searched up the word skateboarding on YouTube. And a video of Rodney Mullen came up, and he was doing, like, all that freestyle, kind of, like, old school stuff, just on flat ground. By the way, I'm sitting on a trolley, and it really hurts to sit on it. That's why I keep moving around. That's better. So, yeah, I found a video of Rodney Mullen, and, um... I was like, oh my god, you can actually do tricks on this four-wheeled piece of wood thing. So I just went out onto my driveway every single day and just learned how to like tic-tac and go around in circles and just manual and just, uh, I remember learning to ollie. Uh, I could never actually get off the ground, so what I used to do was just lift up the, uh, lift up the front wheels and lift up the back wheels really, really fast, so it kind of looked like that. So it kind of looked like I got air, but, um, yeah, I could never actually ollie. Anyway, I practice, practice, practice. All I wanted to do was skate. And obviously when you're six years old, you don't really have any priorities. So I just put all my time and effort into skateboarding. And eventually I learned ollies. And then I went to this like skate school. And I remember learning kickflips there. I used to hold onto the fence and like learn how to kickflip. And um, I could never ever do it. And it frustrated me so much. And around that time was like when I really learned how to like persist with things. And like I really learned how to like just keep pushing at something until I got it. You know what I mean? Like I... Like, I feel like in like, just whatever you do, skateboard, BMX, and you know, scooter riding, rollerblading, everyone has that like, mindset where they just won't stop until they land a trick, and I think it was when I was learning kickflips, was when I learned how to really like, just push myself that little bit further until I learned it, and I remember I never ever learned kickflips at that skate school, 
but I never ever ever gave up. I remember on my street one day I had, I remember I had a board which was way too big for me. I had black and yellow striped grip tape and I landed my first ever kickflip on my street. My dad filmed it on his phone and I was like so hyped. I, I, I learned how to kickflip. That was like a dream come true. And I also uh, learned how to like drop into quarter pipes and kind of like go down banks and pump around the bowls a little bit. Because I used to get taken to Chatswood Skate Park, which is still my local today, which is crazy. Through riding at Chatswood Skate Park, I met this guy called Paul, Paul Galea. He was a lot older than me. He was uh, 14 or 15 maybe, so he was quite a lot older than me. And um, he had a camera and he always used to make skate videos with his mates at the skate park and um, I asked him if he could make me a skate video and um, we never really got round to it and like about a year went on and I was about nine years old I think yeah 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 I was nine years old he said yeah let's make the skate video so we filmed a couple of clips at my local park and the skate video is still up on YouTube today I think it was from like 2008 or 2009 if I find a skate video on YouTube I'll play a couple of clips up on the screen right now if I don't I'll link it in the description below that video was so sick I like board slided the uh, the rail at Chatswood I did a um, kick flip down the half pipe which was like back then that was crazy I mean that still is pretty crazy for like an eight or nine year old to be kick flipping down that half pipe that was sick I learned how to like ride half pipes, like do axle stalls and like rock to fakies and stuff. And then I remember my first ever street clip I ever filmed was me ollieing down this like pretty steep nine stair and then I kick flipped it. I was eight or nine years old and I just kick flipped down this like huge steep nine stair and that was um... And that was definitely like a huge highlight for me. I remember like just that video surfaced on YouTube and I was just like, I was so hyped. That was when I kind of got like found out in the Sydney skate scene about my skateboarding. Um, yeah, I was like this little kid in like tight red jeans wearing this like purple helmet or something and um, I was shredding. I was like eight or nine years old. It was crazy. And then ever since that video came out, all I wanted to do was just film more videos. Just film a video and then like publish it on YouTube and just like show the skate world like me skating. I feel like I've always had like this connection with YouTube. You know, I started putting out like uh, YouTube videos of myself, like skate videos onto YouTube when I was like, you know, not even 10 years old. So um, I feel like I've already, like I've always had this connection with YouTube and that's why I love making videos today. And then around the time I was aged like eight or nine or maybe even, yeah, 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 like eight, um, eight or nine, my auntie used to live in a suburb called Summer Hill and there's a pretty good skate park there. Uh, it's been refurbished since then, but Summer Hill Skate Park was one of my favorite skate parks. It had like mini quarters, it had like mini rails, uh, like a little kind of like hump thingy and I used to love skating there um, and we used to go to visit my auntie quite a bit. So we would go to, so my mum would drop me off at the skate park and she would go see my auntie and then they'd come watch me at the skate park for a bit. And um, there was this competition at Summer Hill which had been advertised in the local newspaper and stuff. My auntie told me about it and she said like you should enter the comp and I remember we turned up on the comp day and I was so nervous. I signed up for the comp, I signed myself up on the thing and um, I was so nervous and like I was in the, I was in the youngest division. They called out my name for my run and I was so nervous I was like about to bail out and then I, I thought like stuff it just just drop in and just start your run and I think skateboarding taught me so much that taught me to kind of just fight through your fear like when you're super nervous to just go for something like not just in a trick but in like you know in front of a crowd in like competition I was so nervous to compete that day but I just I just went for it and um I dropped in and I did my run and I was so nervous I did not have a run planned I didn't know what tricks to do but um, I just made it up as I went and I happened to do a trick that I'd never done before which was like going up a quarter pipe and doing a 5-0 stall and actually, actually, actually this comp was before that skate video came out I didn't win the competition, I didn't get any prizes or anything but I was just so happy that I entered the competition and then after that competition this dude came up to me with this massive camera and he said hey I shot a photo for you, I work for the local times newspaper magazine or like the Summer Hill, I don't know, it was some, he, he said he worked, he was like a photographer for a local newspaper in that area and he said uh, do you give me permission to use your photo that I took of you in the newspaper? And I was like, you serious? Like, yeah, sure, go for it. And I never thought that, um, I'd ever actually end up being in the newspaper. He probably shot heaps of photos that day, and, um, he probably asked heaps of people if he, if, um, if he could use their photos. And I never thought I'd actually get chosen, but... Uh, a couple of weeks later my auntie got the local newspaper and I was in there. I was actually in there. I was doing a trick. I'm not sure if I have the newspaper article, although I have the original photo uh, which hangs up on my wall just above my bed. Um, and I look at that all the time and think like that was when like I really 
really like started loving skateboarding and yeah I got in the newspaper and that was crazy like just out of the blue I was in the newspaper it's kind of hard to remember like how old I was at all these times but when I was nine or ten years old there was this competition called the dropping hammers skate competition which was held at Sun Ives skate park by skater HQ which is a skate shop where I used to always get my skateboards from I entered the 12 and under division I can't remember any of the tricks I did in my run but I remember winning the competition I won a skateboard I won wheels and stuff I won some shirts and um, I actually got in the newspaper again that was like that was crazy and I have got that newspaper article it said um they like described the competition and then at the bottom it said Jack Dowd was crowned under 12 champion or something uh, up against so and so and that was awesome I was in the newspaper for the second time and that comp was on for another two years in a row and the next two years I won as well I won that competition three times in a row and um, that comp was never on again. Uh, I think they tried to put it on like a year ago, like from today, and it was rained out or something. And uh, yeah, I just filmed heaps of videos in the meantime for my friend's YouTube channel, my mate Lockie. I made this one skate video, I can't remember which video it was. But I had a couple of videos piled up and I sent it to this skate shop called uh, called Hopkin. At the time it was called Hopkin, uh, the, the name's changed now, they've moved location and stuff. But at the time, I sent my skate video to this skate shop and I asked them if they'd sponsor me. And they didn't really give me an answer in the email, they just said come in and we'll talk about it and I kind of thought that meant, oh, they don't really want to say no over email or something. But I went in with my dad one day and um, they said, yeah, we'd be happy to have you on the team and they gave me a skateboard like a week later, like a full complete. And I was sponsored at the age of 11 years old. I was sponsored, I was in the sixth grade and I was a sponsored skater. I remember telling my teacher that I got sponsored, telling all my mates, whenever I needed a new board, I would go in there and get a board. They, they were so generous, they gave me shoes, they were gonna get help me get sponsored by a shoe company. I was making videos all the time and the best skate video I ever made before I quit skating was called um, Jacked Out Hopkin Edit. And um, I'll play a couple of the clips right now on the screen. I remember I did like a 360 over a pyramid at Avalon Skate Park. I remember I used to boost the hips and I remember I kick flipped down the biggest quarter at Avalon Skate Park. My front side flipped a six stair. I was making videos. I was sponsored. I was still skating my local park, Chatswood. I was skating there like all the time, dude. Like every single day I'd go there after school on the weekends. That was where I like learned all my tricks. That was like my kind of base for like learning tricks that was where I learned everything around that time I started to see like way more scooter riders hit the skate park so I used to see like almost more scooter riders and skateboarders at the skate park and around that time right now you have like the friendly crew and before friendly crew was like established as friendly crew and like the friendly crew is like a scooter crew in Sydney before that crew was actually like established it was just like a couple of people riding it was like Jackson Manzi, obviously a few of the guys who don't ride anymore, like Ben Harradine, I think is how you pronounce his last name. And I remember I always used to borrow their scooters at the skate park, and I remember I just like jumping the hip and just like dropping in and trying like tail whips and stuff. And I mucked around in their scooters for like years, well for like months, I remember always just doing tricks for fun. I have these mates who come from France every year, and we were just family friends, we never skated or scooted, we just kind of mucked around on trampolines and stuff. And we always used to just muck around on the street, yeah, like we used to kind of just longboard down the street and stuff. And they got into scootering in France, and when they came to Australia, um, they were always scootering and I was skating, and I really wanted to like socialize more with them. So I dug up my old Razor A1 scooter from my garage, and I already had experience on that from like borrowing people's scooters at my local park Chatswood. So I would scooter with them on my street a little bit, we'd learn flat tricks. I was still skating like so much then, like I, like I never thought I'd start scootering. And I would do this line just so many times in a row, I'd do like a 360 tie tap, so I'd do a 180, land on my back wheel, complete like the 360, like do like a 360 tie tap. Then I'd hop onto my friend's driveway and then tail whip off the gutter. And I remember, yeah, that was like the day I learned tail whips. I like showed everyone in the street that I could tail whip. And I got a Razor Pro and I went to Bunnings Warehouse with these, uh, with these French dudes. And um, we went to like the bolt section and we bought bolts so we could bolt up our Razor Pros. I went to this bike shop and I got these like sick modded up bike grips and everything. When that scooter was all set up, that was like the first day I went to the skate park without my skateboard and with the scooter and everyone was like oh my like all the scooter riders was like oh my god you're finally starting the scooter and then there were a couple of skaters who were like hating on me heaps and like I never ever went to the skate park with my skateboard ever again it was just weird how it was like eight years of skateboarding I was so determined to just get good at scootering like I swear everything that I rode or everything that I like learned to do I just wanted to be the best like I just had this mindset that I just wanted to be the best at it anyway the Razor Pro didn't last very long when those French guys went back to France they left one of their scooters in Australia because they couldn't bring it on the plane or something and it was called an Oxello scooter Oxello is like the kind of Razor equivalent in France and they left it there in their garage and I called them up when they were back in France when they went back home and I said hey can I go get that scooter from your garage my Razor Pro is like broken and they were like yeah sure and I went and got that scooter, I took off the handlebars and I put on these like really crappy T-bars. And I remember I met a couple of people at the skate park. I met Jack McCann who still rides today. He's like the only person who I met back in the days that still rides today. 
And um, I met this guy called Tets Lewis and Quillam White. And Tets, my friend Tets was like the only guy at my local park. He was a scooter rider who was actually making like scooter videos of his mates. And he made a video of my, me and my mate Quillam White. And um, it's the most embarrassing video. I was wearing like these short shorts. I was scootering around with these like 18 inch wide bars. It's like, and, and, and they were like super tall bars in comparison to the width. And I'll show you some clips now from that video if I can find it on YouTube. I do like front lifts, I like bar spin the hip. That was like my first ever scooter video. And since then it was the same as skating. All I wanted to do was just film video parts and showcase them on YouTube for everyone to see. From skateboarding, I had this mindset that like I couldn't leave the skate park without not learning the trick. If I got to the skate park one day and said, hey, I want to learn 360 tail whips. Let's say I got to the skate park after school and it was like 3 p.m. Um, I would start learning three whips and then I'd take a break and maybe go get a drink, but I would not stop learning that trick. It wouldn't matter how long or how late I was at the skate park to, as long as I learnt that trick before I went home. From skateboarding, I learnt so much. I learnt to push myself beyond my limits. I learnt to push through the nerves and just not care what anyone thought. Just do your own thing, keep pushing the things. And I remember that, I think, like from skateboarding, I got the mentality to just get so good at scooter riding. I forced myself to learn tricks. When I fell off, I remember I used to face plant. I remember when I used to skate, I broke my wrist. But I never stopped. I like, I just, I wanted to be the best. Like I was, I wasn't competing with anyone. I was only competing with myself. I wanted to prove to myself that I could go home with this new trick in my bag of tricks. And um, yeah, I started scootering in like 2011 when I was 12 years old. And uh, yeah, two years down the track, I got sponsored. Um, and if you want to hear all about how I got sponsored and my experience with sponsors at scooter riding, I actually made a video called What Happened to All My Sponsors, which I uploaded, I think, three or four videos before these videos. So I'll link that in the description below. And that's pretty much the story, how I went from a sponsored skateboarder to a sponsored and professional scooter rider today. Being a YouTuber, having some of the biggest sponsors in the world for scootering. But I think I started scootering for the better. I'm having so much fun scootering. It's like my sixth year scootering. I've been to London, I've been to Melbourne, I've been all over Sydney. I will be flying overseas again later this year, I'm not sure where yet, but I will be. I love scootering, it's going so good and I'm so glad that I got into this whole YouTube thing and I can share videos and I can share stories like this with you guys because if I never started a YouTube channel, I would have this whole like skateboarding life behind me that no one would ever know about and you know with YouTube and with all these like subscribers and stuff, I have the chance, you guys have the experience to listen to me tell you all my stories about my past life with uh, action sports. I'm bored of sitting on this trolley, let me take off my camera. I'm going to answer the two kind of core questions and probably the reason you clicked on it. Why and how I did it. Why? Because I loved scootering. How I did it, how did I become a sponsored skateboarder, uh, you know, getting hooked up all the time with free gear and then go to a, you know, sponsored and professional scooter rider in such a short amount of time. It was the mentality that I've had for so long, the mentality that I got from skateboarding, just like wanting to kind of push myself so much. Like I, like I used to stay out so late at night just on my street, learning one flat trick, just like wanting to get good and just having that mentality of like, just pushing myself so much. Like I, like I would just like, I'd get up my flat bar and I would learn so many tricks just in one session because I would push myself and I'd push myself and that's how I did it. I just never stopped. I just never ever gave up. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you on the channel tomorrow at the same time, guys. Thank you for watching. I've got my earphones, but yeah, thanks. Bye.